1972, men's basketball finale. The undefeated Americans were facing the Soviets. Both teams convincingly won their first eight games of the tournament. But the Americans were on a 63-0 winning streak and were expected to beat the Soviets. Unfortunately, the Americans lost, they lost by a margin of one point and so refused to accept the result in the silver medal. This game was a part of the 1972 Summer Olympics, in which the Soviets won 50 gold medals, a record that was broken only by the Soviets in 1980, with 80 gold medals. If we look throughout the Olympic history, especially between 1952 to 1988, we see a common pattern. And that pattern is the sheer number of times the Soviets have won the Olympics. Between 1952 and 1988, they won 6 out of 10 Summer Olympics, and 7 out of 9 Winter Olympics. So why were the Soviets so good at sports? Our story begins in the year 1948. Nearly three years have passed since the end of World War II. Two main opposing ideologies emerged from the ashes of the war. Capitalism, represented by the United States. And communism, represented by the Soviet Union. Both the Americans and the Soviets tried to outcompete each other in many fields. Ranging from scientific research, industrial output, and military technology, just to prove that their system is far superior to their adversaries. Sports was one of such fields the Soviets wished to excel at. For this to be the reality, the Soviets had to build a new system and a new approach to sports. But from its inception, back in 1921, the Soviet leadership saw sports as a tool used by the bourgeois system which explained their lack of participation in international sporting events. But the 1930s saw Soviet Union's entry into the League of Nations, which paved the way to their entry into international sporting events, which began with the Soviet football team, Spartak Moscow, playing exhibition matches against professional Czech clubs in East Brno. In the mid-1930s, Czech soccer clubs were among the best in Europe, Earlier that summer, Czechoslovakia finished as runner-up in the World Cup. Nevertheless, the Soviet team defeated Zidanese Brno 3-2. Victory against a professional side garnered respect for Soviet soccer across Europe. After the exhibition match in Czechoslovakia, Soviet teams received more invitations from Western European nations. In the remaining years of the 1930s, Soviet teams both traveled to and hosted more international matches against professional clubs. For the Soviets, a nation that was seen as an outcast for the most part of the 1920s. These winnings meant prestige and helped further the communist agenda. But at the same time, some dude in Germany named Adolf Hitler started World War II. He was defeated in 1945, but with his defeat emerged a new superpower that was positioned to take on the US hegemony. Now more than ever before, the Soviets needed to prove their ideology was better than the West. Fast forward to 1948. The Soviets were invited by the IOC, but they refused as it would not be ideal if their athletes lost against Americans. In the following years, the Soviets took a massive initiative to train their athletes for the 1952 Olympics. Their primary goal was to beat the Americans and they nearly did. They came second. The thought of beating the Americans was of such importance to the Soviet leadership that they began the effort to turn the USSR into an athletic superpower. Factories and offices were equipped with gyms, spurred on by posters which tell them how they can produce more for the five-year plan. If they are in prime condition, sports surround the Soviet citizen on his vacation and formed a major part of any festival. Amount of leisure time resulting from a universal eight-hour day, a passion for mass activities, and affordable facilities. The barrage of propaganda extolling the advantages of physical fitness, plus an almost deliberate, Certainly conscious, withdrawal by the average citizen from the complex problems of politics and economics in the Soviet Union. Put it all together, and you have a sports and physical fitness boom with importance in Soviet life, which is unparalleled anywhere else in the world at that time.